So intersymbol interference in digital communication systems is when you send a signal over a finite amount of time and by the time it's gone through the channel, which might be a wireless channel or an optical fiber or a copper wire, uh, it gets to the other end and it is somehow spread out into longer than just that period of time. And it's interfering with the next symbol that you would want to send, which starts at T and goes till 2T. So let's think about when this arises and how this arises. And there's two main situations where this arises. The first one is in wireless communications. And pretty simple to think, you have a transmitting antenna and a receiving antenna. There's a direct line of sight and you might also have a wall. So that signal might also be bouncing off one or maybe in general lots of different walls and lots of different things, trees and everything, buildings and so on. But in this case, let's just consider one wall. So what would happen there is you're going to, at the receiver, this is a channel and this channel has an impulse response and the impulse response for this channel would be if you put an impulse into this antenna, then a direct line of sight, let's assume, let's put the zero timing here to be the time when the direct line of sight arrives. So the impulse response for this channel would have a delta function at time zero and a delta function of a different height uh, at time delta. So this is the extra time that this second path takes. So one path goes direct and that's the fastest path. The other path takes a longer distance and so arrives later. So if we have our square pulse, and let's say we're just turning on and off for simplicity here uh, for this example. Uh, in a wireless channel, of course, you would have to turn, the waveform would be a sinusoid because the antenna would be radiating, uh, but we're just gonna draw this for uh, illustrative purposes and so you're turning on your signal and up zero and turning it off at T it's a linear channel so it's convolution that happens so you have a square waveform convolved with this impulse response and this gives you the output which is going to have uh, let's draw them separately so the first waveform will come at time zero because we've made zero be the time when the first direct path arrives and it's going to last for T. And then the second waveform is going to come as well and it's going to arrive with a different height because it's it lost some energy as it bounced off the wall uh, and it's going to come at time delta and it's going to go for T plus delta. And of course, it's a linear channel. So the answer, the actual received waveform is the addition of the two which is a waveform that looks in this case like this. And so this is time zero, this is time delta, this is time t, and this is time t plus delta. And the intersymbol interference is this component here. So if we were to write a digital uh, equation for this, we have yk uh, at the kth time instance, we would be receiving h1 would be the component from the amount of energy that arrives between 0 and t times xk, so that's this symbol that was sent at xk, was it a 1, was it a 0, uh, so that's xk. h1 is the component of energy that arrived between 0 and t, and then we'd have plus h2 times xk minus 1, because this will be the energy that is happening and interfering and carrying over into the next time slot. So when you're looking at the current time slot, you'd be having energy from the previous symbol, plus noise, of course. So this is the equation for this simple situation where there's two paths, and this is the digital equation. And this is called intersymbol interference because the waveforms are called symbols. Is it a one or is it a zero? This is the symbol that you are sending. And at the receiver, energy has spread out into the next time slot. And so you've got carryover at the current time k, you'll have carryover from the past time slot in your measurement. This is called intersymbol interference.
The other main way that it happens is worth looking at as well, uh, and this is when you have a band-limited channel. So, for example, let's take a DSL channel, ADSL or VDSL, for example, over copper wires. So these channels have a band limitation, and it tends to look something like this when we plot it with respect to omega. So if we plot the magnitude of the channel response, and this is omega, the frequencies, so in the frequency domain, they have a roll-off. So low frequencies propagate down the copper wires uh, with a good uh, value of gain, but the higher frequency it goes, the more the copper wire will attenuate that signal. And this is something that you can uh, verify with measurements on copper wires. Well, this can be modeled uh, by uh, a one on a plus j omega function. Uh, and this is the module, this is the absolute value of this. Uh, and it, we know that the Fourier transform of, of this, in the Fourier transform, this is the this, this is the Fourier transform on the time domain. This is e to the minus a t times u t, which is a time domain function, which looks like this. So it's an exponential roll-off in time. So this is a uh, this is a um, uh, at the impulse response of an ADSL, VDSL, or any DSL channel. This is the impulse response here. So if we take our square and we convolve it with this impulse response, then the answer to this, and then we have a video of this on the channel, where we have a video that shows how to do the convolution of a square with an exponential, and we'll link to that at the end of this video. But this convolution, uh, you can check out that video to see that the result is an of the uh, convolution of these two will be that at the output of your channel, you will be measuring a waveform that looks like this. And so where this is T here. So this is the this is what's going to come out of your ADSL channel if you put a square pulse in. And so here we are, and again, exactly the same as with the wireless case, this causes intersymbol interference, because all of this part of the signal here is going to be coming, arriving at the receiver after the time slot for that digital symbol. And it's going to be arriving in the next time slot for the next symbol. And so this is called intersymbol interference. And in this case, of course, you can see here, uh, if it is exactly this model here, then it's going to be into the third time slot, the fourth time slot, in fact, an infinite number of time slots, because this is an exponential roll off. Uh, so this case, the intersymbol interference is more than just a single term. And the equation here will be a more generalized version of this, which equals uh, a, the sum over i equals uh, 1 to infinity of hi times xk minus um, i. Uh, uh, let's uh, make that start at 0, and we'll have that will give us our direct line through plus noise. Uh, I might, uh, if I just go back and relabel that h0 and h1 for consistency with this equation. Okay, so there's two main ways that intersymbol interference comes about. Uh, one through multiple paths in wireless, and the other through band limitation in wired channels. Uh, so don't forget to uh, like uh, and share this video, uh, and check out the link uh, for the video that explains the convolution of a square with an exponential uh, to help you to understand this important component of digital communications.